So it, you're at a presentation that it's like the topic of every small conversation you're, you're at, right? The weather. Everybody talks weather, except for my wife. She doesn't care. In fact, <laughs> if the news is on and weather comes on, she'll start doing something else. It, it's, it's, it's funny, because I'm the complete opposite. I was telling Mike when my first job in the Twin Cities was in youth sports. So I was constantly looking at, at, the, at the weather, because it's outdoor, sometimes indoor, um, sports that the weather would impact. So it's interesting. Anyway, uh, so the last couple of years has been a crazy couple of years of weather. Who remembers the July 3rd storm of 2018? Who got nailed on 2018 in their house? Was I the only one that got flooded in the two, July 3rd, 2018 storm? It was bad. Um, so I'm just going to introduce Mike Gillespie. He came here. He came here from Sioux Falls today, National Weather Service, uh, to talk about weather. Uh, so he's born and raised in southeastern Nebraska. Uh, Beatrice. 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 Graduated from Beatrice High School. In uh, attended Kearney State College, which some of you know, um, a few people here in town from Kearney. He received a BS in Atmospheric Science from the University of Kansas. He attended graduate school at Texas Tech University, worked for the weather data in Wichita, Kansas, joined the National Weather Service as an intern in Portland, Maine in 1991, transferred to National Weather Service in Lubbock, Texas until 94, came to the National Weather Service as a general forecaster through 95, and then took over as a senior service hydrologist, hydrologist in 1995 uh, to, and that's what he currently does. He oversees the hydrology, hydrology programs for the Sioux Falls and the Aberdeen offices, covering all of central and eastern South Dakota, as well as parts of western Minnesota, northwestern Iowa, and northeastern Nebraska. Let's give uh, Mike Gillespie a nice Marshall welcome. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for letting me come and uh, talk to your group here. Uh, as you said, we, everybody's interested in the weather, uh, particularly after the, what we've seen the last few years around the area. Uh, I'm going to give you kind of a rundown uh, recap of what happened primarily just last year. Uh, the last year and a half or so. Where we're sitting right now as far as water, snow, and things like that, and a little bit of a look ahead as we go into the rest of winter, spring, and even the first part of summer, what we might be able to expect as far as temperatures and precipitation go, and flooding as well too. Flooding obviously is, uh, is, the, is the topic of the day across most of the northern plains. And if we look at, there we, whoops, there we go. This map here is showing the departure from normal precipitation for what we call the water year. This goes from October 1st of 2018 through September 30th of last year. All of the areas in purple are 12 inches or more above. You get into the darker purple or that color purple, you're looking at more than 20 inches above normal for the year. And what I want to point out here is the amount of the United States that was 16 to 20 plus inches above normal last year. It wasn't just in Marshall, it wasn't just in Minnesota, South Dakota. The entire Missouri River Basin the Mississippi River Basin, the Ohio River Basin, everywhere had very much above normal precipitation. Except for our good friends in Iowa, they were pretty close to normal. I don't know what happened down there, how they, how they lucked out. But, uh, you know, we got a little hole here in Iowa, but other than that, the entire region was much, much above normal precipitation last year. go. This graph here shows the annual precipitation for Marshall going back to 1935. And it's kind of hidden over here, but there's a dot here. It's 2019. Pulled out the table. The top three 
record wettest years in Marshall have all occurred in the last 10 years, including a new record set last year. 45, almost 46 inches of rain fell in Marshall. 2010 had been the record at 43. 2018, just the year before, was, is now down to third place. The, the, all three of those years, wetter to much wetter. 1993, everybody that was around back in those days remembers the huge floods on the Mississippi River Basin back in 1993. This area, we had less than 40 inches of rain. Since then, in the last 10 years, we've broken that 40 inch mark three times, including almost 46 inches last year. The graph here, if you can kind of see that red line here, is just a best fit line for all of that data. And you can see if it's back in 1935, 1940, it was down here around 24, 25 inches uh, as considered normal. Where we're at right now on that best fit line is almost 30 inches. So in that roughly 80, 90 year period, 85 year period, we've seen the average precipitation in Marshall go up about four or five inches. And again, the, the top three wettest, kind of hidden by the square there, but 2019, 2018, and 2010, the only ones we've ever had above 40 inches. So not only was a huge area impacted, but again, you look at how much above normal it was. We've had record precipitation. Sioux Falls also did the same thing. We broke the record in 2018 with a very wet year, turned around and broke that record again in 2019. Several, many locations where we keep track of precipitation uh, some, like Sioux Falls, has records going back into the late 1800s. Uh, so we've got 130 years of data versus 70 years of data. And we're breaking these records that have stood for quite a while. This here graph will show the, this is from June of 2018 through yesterday, or actually the 12th is when I pulled the data here. Uh, the accumulation of precipitation is the green line over that roughly 18 month period. The brown line is the normal. What I want to show you is over here. Normal for that 18 month period is about 47 and a half inches. What we've seen in the last year and a half, almost 78 inches. We're 30 inches above normal over an 18 month period. So again, just showing you how extreme it has been. Flooding last year, obviously everybody remembers that. Anybody that was around the area last year remembers the flooding. Uh, the big one we had here uh, in this area was mid to late March. If we look at the snowpack back from March 10th of last year, here's Marshall right in the middle of the map. Uh, this is the water equivalent of the snowpack. How much water is in the snowpack when you melt it down? What would that be the equivalent to of a rainfall? And what we had last year, we had a lot of six to 10 inch values in, as we headed out of winter. The snowpack that was out there had the equivalent of six to 10 inches of rain once it melted. And you see again, the Redwood River, uh, Lyon County, Lincoln County, down into Murray, Cottonwood, some of the, heavy, the highest areas as far as the water content of that snowpack went. Over here into uh, the Big Sioux Basin, we had some, a few higher amounts here and there, but on average, it wasn't quite as widespread as what we saw in the Minnesota and Redwood Basins over here. Then we had March itself. That didn't help anything last year. Uh, again, uh, Marshall up in here, this is the percent of normal precipitation uh, in March of last year. And again, you can see not too bad, only 150 to 200 percent of normal for Lyon County. Much better than the uh, 400, 500 percent of normal that we saw over in the Big Sioux Basin. But when you combine that 150 percent of normal precipitation 
that fell in the form of rain for the last half of the month, on top of that three to six, seven inches of water out there, you know, March itself, three inches of rain is not that big of a deal, but when you add three inches of rain to six inches of water that's already on the ground, now all of a sudden you're getting nine inches of precipitation running off into the river system all at once. Top that out with a lot of ice action. It's very cold late last winter. Ice was very thick uh, on all the rivers and streams around the area. And just in March alone last year, these are all of the gauges in my forecast area that hit new record crests. Big Sioux River, Missouri River, Little Sioux River, uh, Floyd River down here in, in Iowa, Pipestone Creek, and Marshall hit a new record crest. It wasn't the highest flow on record. That still belongs to 1993, the amount, of, the volume of water coming through. But because of the ice and some of the changes in the levee systems and things like that around town, it had, it, the water got to a higher elevation than it ever had here. But again, you see, it wasn't isolated. It was the whole area. There's even more of these. If I extended this down into Nebraska, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers the Niobrara River. There was a dam that washed out in north central Nebraska. Uh, Spencer Dam, I believe, was the name of it. That water came in uh, down here at Niobrara, uh, and it caused Gavin's Point Dam. Pretty big system there. That hit a new record elevation because of all of the water coming in. They had to do a huge, the Corps of Engineers had to do a huge release to uh, get that water out of Gavin's Point. Uh, you guys kind of lucked out a little bit on the September floods last year. Um, these are all of the record crests that were set in September. And you'll notice that in the Big Sioux Basin, Pipestone Creek area again, all of these places that had just set a new record back in March broke that record in September. Widespread 3 to 10 inches of rain isolated amounts of 12 inches up here in Brookings County, down into Moody County, Pipestone County. Uh, it was very similar to what you guys saw back in July of 2018, except over a much larger area. The tw July 2018 event was basically about a four county area, uh, Lincoln Lion, Pipestone, and Murray. The event that we had in September last year, extended all the way from Charles Mix County up into Pipestone and Lincoln counties at least. Lyon and Murray got decent amounts of rain, you know, three to five inches, I believe, in this area, but it, the flooding that resulted from that was not near as bad as what we saw just a little bit farther to your east. So, two record flood events in 2019. How are we sitting right now as we go into the last, hopefully the last parts of winter here soon and uh, into the spring this year? What are we looking at? Well, here is our latest snow depth maps. And you see I-90 is kind of a nice little cutoff down here. Areas south of I-90, generally uh, say six inches or less of snowfall down there. Uh, I did notice driving up here that right around Marshall, you guys' snow depth is not that, not that bad. It was quite a bit uh, thicker as I got, went through northern Pipestone County today. Uh, so this map does make sense. We're looking at 10 to 20 inches of snow uh, through this area right here. So the water content of that snowpack. And again, I-90 south, we're basically two inches or less. Right around Marshall, again, two inches or less. The areas with the deeper snowpack are still in that, say, two to four inch range. So, decent amount of water out there. It's, a, it's higher than what we normally see in late January. Uh, but two to four inches of, rain, of snow water is not in itself gonna cause any huge problems as we go forward. It's really gonna depend on how much more we get and what kind of melt we have and uh, any kind of additional precipitation on top of that snowpack. So as we sit right now, st snow-wise, we're not in too terribly bad a shape. It hasn't been a terribly bad winter so far. Here's where we are 
now where we start seeing some of the problems. This is showing the soil moisture anomalies across the United States. And again, you look at that area, this kind of matches up pretty good with that area that was in purple on the first map that had 16 to 20 plus inches above normal rainfall. Uh, again, this whole area, th these values are in millimeters. So we're looking at 100 to 140 millimeters above normal. You're look that's roughly, say, four to six inches of water in the soils above normal. How does that stack up against climatology? This map here, uh, it shows where in the climatology the current soil moisture ranks. Anything above 99 is the wettest it has been at this time, for this date. The entire upper plain, northern plains, upper Midwest, Great Lakes region, everybody, the soil moisture is as wet as it has been at this time of year. So, we know the soils are wet. They're not frozen too bad, that's another good thing. I don't think I have any uh, graphics on that. The frost depths in the soil are not terribly bad right now. We're looking at maybe 10 to 20 inches in areas that the ground has been exposed. Any areas that got some early snowpack back in November, early December, that snow kind of acts as a blanket. And we've got areas that only have three to six inches of frost in the soils. So that's another good thing that we have right now uh, that in the soils at least is that they're not frozen as solidly as they were last year. But they are wetter than they were last year. This graph here uh, is from a groundwater well from the USGS uh, right over by Redwood Falls. Uh, this one has only been in place for uh, about 12 years over there, but the red line you see here is what the, basically you're looking at the water table, what the water table, the aquifer levels are, and what they've been for the last year. And you can see here that the top of the blue line is the record for those months. The red is what was observed, and you can see we are basically setting the record all the way up through November, and instead of December and January, where you normally see a little bit of a drop off down there, water tables have continued to go up. We're looking at uh, the previous highest in January was 924 feet. We're almost two feet higher than it's ever been in January, at least in that 12, 13 year period of record for this gauge. And again, you can see here's normal down here and what we had in the last year here. The blue being the record and how it's continued to go up. So, the soils are saturated, they can't hold any water. The water table is higher than it's ever been, can't hold any water. Not good things going forward. Stream flows. This map here, again from the USGS, everything in blue is above the 90th percentile, which means very wet. Everything in black is at records for these dates. Uh, this was at the end of October. Uh, they quit posting these maps or they don't update them during the winter when things are frozen because you can't measure the flow when the rivers are frozen over. But again, you look at the entire Big Sioux, uh, Red River, Minnesota River, all of Minnesota over in Wisconsin, South Dakota, North Dakota, rivers were higher than they'd ever been going into the winter. Got a little bit of a graph here that shows the Redwood River near Marshall gauge. Uh, this is for the last two plus years here. You can see back in 2018, the green is normal over the period of record, 78 years. Brown and yellow would be below normal. The light blue to dark blue would be above normal to much above normal. And again, the top of that blue line is record. It's never been, that's the highest it's been on those dates. So you can see back in 2018, starting out the spring, things were pretty normal. We did have a wet year, much above normal to some near, here's the uh, July 2018 uh, flows, did set a record for that date. Uh, but going into the winter, things kind of dropped back down at least to closer to normal at least starting out 2019 
And then here's where we shot up back into those record levels uh, in, in March. And here's our September rain pushed it right back up. This red dot's where we're sitting right now. Uh, that's where our flow is at right now on, on the Redwood River. And normally we should be down here, basically no flow. And we're sitting up here at about 250 CFS uh, as of today. So um, compared to where we started out last year, around 50 CFS. So again, that river is running higher, more water flowing through it right now than what we started at last year and higher than it's ever been in early January, mid-January. So what does that mean going forward? Here is the February, March, April three-month outlook. This would be the average temperatures over that three-month period. Uh, right now, it looks like we've got pretty good chances of seeing below normal temperatures for the February, March, April period. Luckily, it doesn't look like you know, January is going to go out on a really nice note this weekend, it looks like. Uh, you know, some really nice temperatures, but uh, when we start averaging things out over the next three months, things are pointing towards below normal temperatures. Good news, precipitation-wise, over that three-month period, we're pretty much near normal. We're not seeing anything that right now is pointing towards a very wet end of winter, early part of spring. More good news for you there. Even as wet as we are, we're looking at normal precipitation uh, being the best bet right now versus above normal precipitation. The bad news is, even with normal precipitation, we're going to have worse flooding than we would normally have because of how wet things are and the fact that we just don't have anywhere out there to store that water. Soils are full, full rivers are full, lakes are full, aquifers are full that water just doesn't have anywhere to go. So even normal precipitation is going to cause worse than normal flooding as we go forward. Now we look into the end of spring, our first part of summer, May, June, and July. Normal temperatures and normal precipitation. That is great news. I hope that happens. You know, obviously we could use even a little below normal to kind of let things go out, but as far as... Uh, the longer range outlooks go, we're at least not showing any signs of continuing this above normal trend as things sit right now. So we can hope for normal, and that's going to be okay. It's a lot better than what we've seen the last few years. Flooding wise, here again for the Redwood River near Marshall, the blue, this is our latest 90 day probabilistic outlook, came out uh, a week ago. And this carries us through the end of April. The blue line here shows you what has normally happened uh, on the Redwood River. So flood stage, 14 feet. The normal probabilities of hitting that in February, March, and April is about 12%. This year, we're sitting up closer to 25 to 30%. Much better than so if you look at these maps for the Big Sioux River where we're looking at 80 to 90 percent chances of hitting at least minor flooding over there. So chances of flooding, again, above normal, not terribly bad though considering where we're sitting right now. Same thing for moderate and major flood levels. Uh, the black line being above that, you know, or to the left, is showing increased probabilities. Normally we have a, about a 7% chance of hitting moderate flooding. This year we're about 17. And major is 5%. And we're only looking at about a 7% chance of hitting major flood levels uh, this year as we sit right now. So that is what I have. Uh, some good news, some bad news. Um, definitely don't want to panic anybody, but we do need to be aware that as we sit right now, we are in, things are very wet. Uh, the, the antecedent conditions leading into the winter, record wet to very wet across the entire region. Good news is the snowpack's not too terribly bad out now, there right now, and the outlooks are not pointing towards that continuation of above normal precipitation. So let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that we can at least, uh, you know, 
avoid setting a third record in uh, three years here. So that's what I have. Any questions, comments? Open the floor to anybody. So what would we have to see to um, be back to that, you know, that record stage? I mean, the rest of the spring, like, uh, like how much snow? What what would change? Yeah. So you keep referring to as as things are right now. What would have to change, or how would it have to change? Yeah. The, the big factors that we just can't give you a definitive answer on right now going forward over, say, the next six to eight weeks generally, um, how much more snow are we going to get? Is any of that snow going to melt off? You know, like I say, looking at some nice temperatures this weekend, um, you know, if we can get a, a nice slow melt, get rid of some of that moisture now, um, let it run off into the rivers now as opposed to all of it coming off at once in March and April. So how much additional snow we get, how much of that water sitting on the ground when we start getting some rainfall, are we getting rain on top of the snowpack, and how fast is it going to melt? You know, if we can have a nice slow melt, you know, we're going to be in great shape. Last year, that, five, that three to six inches of water that was in the snowpack came off in about a 10 to 15 day period. That's a lot of water to come off in a short period with, with snow melt. So again, hopefully we can avoid that. First off, avoid building up that big of a snowpack. And second off, avoid melting it all off in such a short period with additional rain on top of it. So that's really what, if you're wanting to watch something, watch that snowpack between now and say the middle to end of March. Yes, sir. It's, it's the same. Uh, actually, as you go north, it's going to be probably a little worse. Um, the snowpack is much deeper as you go into central northern Minnesota. The Red River Basin right now, uh, I was on a call with uh, the Minnesota officials, the Corps, and the GS last week, and uh, there's a lot of concern um, that we're looking at significant major flooding, uh, particularly on, those, on the northern part of Minnesota and the Red R Basin. So, and that's mainly because you know the snowpack is much worse now than than what we've got farther south here. Yes, sir. Do you first see a lot of big weather events, like a lot of uh, longer rain that we've seen in the past couple of years at one time? We, if that's a real tough one, because we have documented more of these big six-plus-inch rain events in the last ten years than we did. 50, 60, 70 years ago. Is that because they're happening more often or because we've got radar satellite estimates and everybody has a rain gauge in their backyard and we're, and we're catching more of those big rain events? I think it's a combination of both. We have seen more extreme rainfall events, uh, say over the last 20 years than, than we used to. Does that mean it's gonna continue? I'll leave that to people that are a lot smarter than me to figure out, so. It has anything to do with the warmer climate? Or? It, it possibly could. You know, if, if the, the climate warms, if the av average temperature is warmer, warmer air holds more water than colder air. But, you know, we're talking a degree, a degree and a half. How much additional moisture is that really? Again, I'll leave that to the people that are way smarter than me. Anything else? Yes, sir. Like how far out can you predict? So you <laughs> We can predict out as far as you'd like. Um, <laughs> how accurate are those predictions? Um, depends on how, how, how detailed you want to get. Um, if you're wanting a detailed daily or, you know, it's going to be this temperature and we get this much rain on this day, you get out beyond about five to seven days, you're, you're, get, you're pushing it there. When you're talking about those averages over a monthly period, we can go out in that six to 12 month range and be fairly, uh, well, I shouldn't say fairly, somewhat skillful. Uh, if, you, if you take a dice and you roll a three-sided dice, above normal, normal, and below normal, climatology, you're gonna get it a third of the time. Well, our outlooks are maybe, instead of 33% uh, hitting it right, we're maybe 37 to 40%. So we're weighting those dice a little bit but there's a lot of work that still needs to be done as far as improving those longer range climate outlooks. But um, 
we're working on it. You know, that, that three to six month time period is really kind of pushing it uh, on, on those, even on those average, monthly average type things. So on one of those earlier maps, um, you, uh, like in the Pacific Northwest, they're drier. Mm -hmm. um, does that change in, you know, they're, they're running drier over there. Does that change there? Is that affecting us? Because, you know, the weather's, as it's moving, you know, moves east. How, how does that contribute to what's going on? Yeah, yeah. usually you're not, you're going to get a general kind of a global or hemispheric pattern where you know everybody's heard of the jet stream that kind of drives where those each storm track comes out and and generally that's constantly changing and even in our wet period here these last two years it's still changing it's just that it seems like every time we do get a big system that comes out it's hit our area but again that very first map it hasn't been just us it's been everywhere the amount of wetness that's out there, there are some studies that are being done. Does having wet soils and, and very wet conditions, does that kind of feed off itself and produce even more wet conditions? There's a lot of research going into that right now at, at different universities and, and the research type things. Uh, haven't seen any definitive answers from that, uh, but that's something that's possible. If you got more available water in an area, the storm systems have more to tap into to produce even more rainfall. Yes. So are we looking to expect the, I know you can't predict that far out, but um, the last couple of years, the same week in April, we've had snowstorms. <laughs> and if that happens again this year, it's on Easter. So um, <laughs> I'm just trying to get my Easter plans in. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just wondering, are we, are we looking at having kind of an April like that again? Because, I mean, that's really what, I mean, it's very, very hard, especially on, on the fields um, and yeah. houses. Um, when you get it that late and that much, when the, when the ground is already very cold. Right. Yeah, the good news is, is like I said, you know, the, the precipitation outlooks through uh, February, March, April are, are looking near normal. And that does not mean that last year was normal or the year before that was normal. That's the long range 30, 50 year normals that we're looking at. So we're not saying it's going to be like last year. Right now, if we had to say, here's our best guess, we're saying that it's gonna be closer to that long term average, which would be you know, a lot less than what we saw the last couple of years. Are we gonna get snow in April? Probably, we almost always do across this area. Uh, March and the first half of April especially are, tend to be some of the snow, snowiest months. And that's because, again, that warmer air that we start seeing in March and April can hold more moisture, but there's still all that cold air that Canada keeps sending our way. So those two clash over the northern plains and we end up getting these big snowstorms. Um, can it happen? Yes. Is it going to happen, particularly on, on Easter? You know, I, I, I'm glad to hear that because it's nice to know these little things, you know, because, you know, Minnesota, I, I don't know that about over here, but in South Dakota, we know that in the middle of March, when it's the state basketball tournament, one of those days, there will be a blizzard in the state of South Dakota. It almost always happens. So I've got another thing to put in my little book for my long range outlooks. I'll know that in April and around Easter, uh, in a, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, so did you guys see it coming last year? So if we look back in, in 2019, and let's say you're giving this presentation in January, what did the outlook look there? Was it showing high? It, it was showing above normal. Uh, we did not, you know, when we put out a long range outlook, we tend to not say exactly what the amount's gonna be, but we say, you know, here's normal. If you get this much above normal, anything from there on up is above normal, below normal there. It was showing above normal as we went into the late, into the last half of winter, spring, summer. Uh, the outlooks that I, I work on and that I, I, that I follow were showing above normal precipitation. Again, we did not expect another second back-to-back -back record precipitation year. Those kind of things you're not going to forecast, but it was showing wet. So that again is a good sign that at least this year we're showing normal. Yes. Is drought becoming less of a concern for No. Um, in the short term, I don't think you're going to have to worry about it this year. Even if it doesn't rain, even if it doesn't rain, I think we've got enough water sitting around out there that you're, you know, you're at record wet soil conditions. You're, you're, you know, even with 
if we hit what would normally be drought type or lack of rainfall, you're probably going to have a decent crop yet because of the amount of moisture that's still out there this year. But does that mean that we can't shut it off? 2010, 2011, record flooding again in those two years across much of the upper Midwest, Northern Plains. 2012, worst drought we've had in the last, let's see if I can, I'm going to go back real quick here. Uh, you guys, it wasn't too bad, uh, 2012 down here, but across South Dakota, areas North Dakota, all across the Northern Rockies and things, down through Texas, uh, 2012 was one of the driest years. If I had this for this same graph for Sioux Falls, it would show 2019 as the record, 2018 as second, 2010 as the third highest, 2012 was about the fourth lowest. So in one year, you can go from very wet conditions to very dry conditions. So is drought still something to worry about? Absolutely. Talk about severe weather out there. Um, obviously May, June, or previous months. Uh, what, what years in recent history have been kind of the bigger years, if you can remember that? How do, you, how do you predict something like that? The last couple of years, we, we don't try and predict how, how much severe weather we're going to have because that's really nothing we can predict beyond the seven-day period where we can see, oh, here's a storm system, everything's coming together, chances for severe weather are increased in this area. We can't tell you a month in advance, say, we're going to have five severe thunderstorms next month or, you know, that this summer we're going to have more than normal tornadoes. We just don't have that. Um, the last couple years, even with all of the rain and uh, wetness we've had, we have not had very much severe weather across the area. Sioux Falls in September, not counted. You know, first time tornadoes have hit in Sioux Falls in however many years. We had three of them one night, did quite a bit of damage down there. But the number of tornadoes, uh, I think I saw a thing, the severe weather outbreak that we had down across Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, uh, earlier this month, had more tornadoes reported and detected than they had for the entire year last year. So the, the severe weather has really not been a big factor across the entire United States for the last few years. Does that mean we're not gonna have it this year? No, it does not mean that. We just don't know. It was a, is that kind of because of our um, under average temperatures? I mean, they've been below average? It could be, but you, know, you look at, all you need is about 70 degrees, and you're going to have the potential for tornadoes and severe weather. Even 60s, you know, if everything comes together right, uh, it doesn't have to be 90 and 100 degrees. In fact, usually when it's 90 and 100 degrees, the atmosphere is what we call capped off. It's too warm that thunderstorms can't rise up through that. It's like a hot air balloon. It has to be warmer than the surrounding environment to continue going up. Well, if the atmosphere is, is warm when it's 90 and 100 degrees, the, that, war, that air trying to go up is not warmer than the environment, so you don't get the thunderstorm development. So actually, you know, when you're in the 70s and 80s, you're going to have a, a much better chance of severe weather than if you get hotter than that. Yes? Mike, I just want to say thank you for the knowledge that you bring to the table today to share with us. What most people don't realize is the connection that we have with the National Weather Service, especially you. You know, you've helped us navigate through some of these times, especially last year. Like it's always been available to us. And as a city, we usually coordinate, we pull a team together to come up with a response to these events. And Mike is usually always included. I've never met him in person, had many phone conversations. Yes, we have. But uh, thank you for always being available to us. Because those calls are. Mornings, evenings, you guys are always willing to do that. National Weather Service, we are always there. We're staffed at least two people around the clock every day. We've always got somebody there to, that's looking at the forecast, looking at the rivers, whatever. If you ever have a question, and again, I'll take you back. Anybody wants contact information? Whoops, there we go. There's my email address and phone number. Shoot me an... 
Yeah, I, I've got a lot of room in my email box, in my inbox. So uh, any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask us. We are a federal government agency. We are funded by your tax dollars. We appreciate those very much. And we are there to help. Any information that we have that we can provide to you guys to help you make decisions that you need to on the local, county, state level, uh, on your farm, if there's something that you need to know, get a hold of us, and if we have the answer, we'll give it to you. All right. Thank you very much.